A developing situation here in Burlington will take you right to the activity. You can see over my left shoulder dozens of emergency responder vehicles, literally bumper to bumper. The house of worship is now for the moment being called a crime scene. We're told that batteries like the one right here could run about $15. This, of course, is a symptom of all the snow that they've received and also all the plowing that's taking place here. The president and CEO says that they are canceling third shift because of what happened inside the building behind me. Something is wrong. A man who called this place home hasn't been there for about a week. Near the intersection of 52nd and Custer, his image rests on trees. We did the flyers, we went door to door. 22-year-old Yvonne Young disappeared January 1st. My fear is that... The following day, he was supposed to see his mother. <laughs> but Annette Perry says her son never made the visit. Hope, and at times, terrible thoughts stopped by instead. My fear is that my baby won't come home. Perry says she called her son last Tuesday night around 1030. The last words spoken to him were, I love you. Young's roommate heard a car pull up outside their home and saw Young leave around 1045. The 22 year old left his jacket behind, suggesting he wouldn't be gone long. He hasn't shown up for work. No one has been able to reach him since. So I started calling back and calling back and it was going straight to voicemail. Online, Young is easy to find. On YouTube, the rapper goes by the name Young LT. His mother says he's never run away before and has no known enemies, though his music could draw scorn or jealousy from others. He's an up-and-coming artist, so there's always people that talk mess here and there. But the family is hoping someone is interested in talking about where Young is, offering this plea. Please call me. Please call the police station. The numbers are on the flyers. Hit us on Facebook. We've got all type of ways for them to contact us. Of all the things you might find along the Milwaukee River, delivered or deposited, prized or passed over. I've never seen anything like this here before. Not many expected to encounter a mystery this big. Uh, looks like about seven feet to me. This intimidating. Looks like he's up to no good. Or this perplexing. Not sure about this one. Only feet from Milwaukee's statue of Arthur Fonzarelli rests a ceramic sculpture. He's uh, looking for Fonzie's approval or something like that. A man in a blue suit and tie, a statue with a stiff upper lip, and even harsher features. I see somebody with some seriously deformed fingers. He's got short legs. It's creative. It's very creative. Without an author or title, the neighbor of the bronze Fonz is called by some the blue who? The blue who? Yeah. Thought maybe the restaurant here had it for some reason. But it doesn't look like it fits the theme of a Chinese restaurant. Definitely has to be some local pranksters. You don't know who left him here? Some wild teenagers on Christmas break or something. Really? How funny. The most unusual part of the art is on the statue's chest, an impression or tattoo revealing a kind of hammer time. <laughs> so you have to stop for hammer time. <laughs> I like that. It's funny. But for now, the name, creator, and reason for the art remains a sculpted secret. Don't know what he's doing with his hands. No word this evening from the alderman that represents the specific area that we were talking about. We did speak with an additional alderman, and he tells us he wasn't aware of any plans to put an additional statue in there and says if no formal plans were made, he'd like that art removed. One thing is definitely for certain. If the artist was looking for additional buzz or publicity, well, he or she got it. I was walking home from Summerfest. July 6th of last year, a UWM student and his then girlfriend were approached from behind near the intersection of Holton and Center. By a man in a mask um, asking for my wallet. I, I was kind of in shock at the time, just said, what? Police reports say the man grabbed the pocket of Sam Took. I was a victim in an attempted robbery. And I mean, when it happened, obviously I was I was scared. Cook says the man saw a squad car and ran off, disappearing into a neighboring yard. The case would reappear in headlines more than a year later. The suspect was 22-year-old Derek Williams, seen taking some of his final breaths inside a Milwaukee police squad car. His gasps for help ignored by officers believing he was faking. He later died from complications from sickle cell. The manner of death, once called natural causes, was recently changed to homicide by medical examiners. Seeing the video, um, it, I mean, it was sickening, really, watching it. I mean, that was, it's, it's just sad, really. Until the police video was released, Took never got a glimpse of what happened after Williams ran off. 
He says he appreciates the quick police response preventing the robbery. At the end of the day, they could have possibly saved my life. While Took is called a victim in the police report, he offers sympathy for the man accused of trying to rob him, labeled a suspect. He was definitely a victim too. I, I think I think watching what I saw, it seems that uh, he needed help and he didn't get it. So I, th I think he would be a victim also. In an exclusive interview, Milwaukee Police Chief Ed Flynn told Fox 6 his officers should have responded more quickly to Williams' health concerns. He added police procedures have already been changed following the reopening of this case. The combination of wind and lake effect snow. Wow. Wow. Left parts of Sheboygan buried. It seemed pretty high up here. So begins the painful plowing. Cue the guy who says that's just the weather in Wisconsin. But in this case, it's just the weather off of Wisconsin Avenue, turning the pavement into an off road rally course. My husband tried to take out the car. He, ha he ended up like sliding all the way down. It's one of a handful of side streets creating problems for people like Viviana Rosero. Overwhelming. <laughs> it was horrible. But the concern for cars didn't stop there. I heard there was some even sheriffs that had to ride in plow trucks because they couldn't, they were getting stuck themselves. We'd like to tell you how many tow runs Jamie Knoll of Brett's Towing went on. Honestly, I've lost count. But like a blizzard. This is the worst I've seen it in a long time. It all blurs together. Deputies and police estimate they assisted about 120 motorists during the storm, some abandoning their cars because of the conditions, and you know it's bad when a tow operator Yeah, I got stuck. needs a tow. I got stuck in uh, over by the county airport. It was a big surprise. We weren't expecting all of this. But back on Wisconsin Avenue, the somehow soothing sounds of a plow makes its way through the neighborhood, a street reclaimed. But for how long? Yes, yeah, so it was brought a smile to my face to see it finally. <laughs>